Stan Jibalisco here to explain just briefly how a semiconductor diode serves as a one-way current gate. You can find a more detailed explanation of all this in chapter 19 of this book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 5th edition. I will provide a link to the Amazon page for this book in the description of this video. For right now, what I'd like to do is start out with a discussion of the flow of electrons versus holes in a semiconductor material. And you may ask, what on earth is a hole? Just about all of us know what an electron is. It's a charge carrier that more or less orbits around the nucleus of an atom and has a negative electrical charge. A hole, on the other hand, is an atom that's kind of missing an electron, so it has a positive charge. A hole isn't a real object as such in terms of the way that it can move, but it can nevertheless move in a virtual sense. When you have any electrical conductor, you have electrons flowing in one direction and electron absences or vacancies in atoms flowing in the opposite direction. Usually in an ordinary conductor like a, a wire, uh, electrons are far more abundant than holes, but there are certain kinds of semiconductor materials in which holes are actually more abundant than the electrons in terms of their ability to carry electrical charge. So a hole is like a vacancy or, or a missing electron and you can just think of it as kind of a not exactly an anti-electron but a uh, but an electron that should be there but isn't and it has a unit positive electrical charge. Well when you're looking at the symbol for a semiconductor diode, you'll see something like this. An anode, which is like an arrow, pointing at the cathode, which is like a straight line. And the cathode generally is made of a material that contains far more electrons than holes, whereas the anode is made of a material that contains more holes than electrons. So we call the anode a p-type semiconductor for positive and the cathode an n-type semiconductor for negative. As things work out, electrons can move easily in a diode from the cathode to the anode. That would be from the lower part of this diagram to the upper part, but not very easily at all, or if at all, from the anode to the cathode. There are certain exceptions uh, but that is a topic for a little bit more sophisticated video than this. Here's a diagram of two test circuits that we can actually use to test a diode. These resistors here are there to prevent excessive current from flowing through the diode and burning it out. Here's a battery. Here's a battery. Notice the negative terminal of the battery is on the right positive terminal battery is on the left here in drawing A, whereas in drawing B it's exactly reversed. Remember electrons carry a negative charge so electrons will flow like this and they can flow easily through this diode from the cathode to the anode so that we will see current in a milliameter. That's what this MA stands for is milliameter. We can actually build a circuit like this and test diodes to be sure that they're working properly. We should get current under these conditions when electrons are flowing from cathode to anode and we call that forward bias. In the case of reversing the battery polarity we call that reverse bias. Electrons try to flow from the anode to the cathode but they can't so we don't get any current and the milliameter will show zero milliampers. That is called reverse bias. So a, a diode will conduct when it is forward biased but not when it is reversed biased and that is a little bit of an oversimplification but for all intents and purposes when we want to use a diode as a one-way current gate this 
simplistic rule applies. Now, why does that happen, you might ask? What's actually going on inside of a diode like this? Well, in the condition of forward bias, that is to say where electrons are flowing effectively from the cathode over here on the left, the n-type semiconductor meaning negative, to the anode over here on the right, the p-type semiconductor meaning positive, electrons can flow through this junction into the anode or p-type material quite easily. Holes tend to move in the opposite direction from electrons and they are attracted to this so-called p-n junction right here. So these electrons can actually join up with the holes and kind of neutralize them in effect creating a continuous current flow. But when we switch the polarity around so that we connect the negative pole of a battery over here to the anode and the positive pole to the cathode over here. This positive charge over here on the left will attract these electrons and pull them away from the junction between the N and the P-type materials. Similarly, the negative charge here over here will tend to attract the holes away from this junction so that charge carriers are in a sort of a way sucked away from this boundary here resulting in a region on either side of the actual boundary where there aren't any charge carriers at all and in, we call that a depletion region because it's depleted of charge carriers. So that is how a diode like this actually works. That's what's actually going on. Remember these black dots represent electrons and these white larger dots represent holes or electron absences. This phenomenon, if we were to reverse the bias at a very rapid rate of speed, hundreds, thousands, or even millions of times per second, this diode is able to follow that effect right along with that high frequency variation in the bias and that allows us to use semiconductor diodes for all kinds of things besides simply a one-way current gate. Gives rise to all manner of applications for semiconductor diodes and manufacturers have come up with a whole lot of different variations on this theme. The way that they manufacture the N and the P-type material, the, the extent of the junction, that is to say the surface area of the junction, the way that the depletion region forms, how much reverse bias it takes to get how much of a depletion region, all these things. It's almost like the pharmacy of electronics. It's almost like these people are uh, a variation of the pharmaceutical companies in the way that they manufacture all these different types of devices to perform all these different functions except instead of your body of course it's an electronic circuit that is being treated by these pharmaceuticals so that is the basic theory of the semiconductor diode Stan Jabalisco signing off Remember this book right here, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 5th edition. Learn all about this topic and a whole lot more. And uh, enjoy yourself in the process, I hope. Until next time, so long.